me again and welcome back to another movie review and it's extremely rare when I go to see a movie like this on the same day it comes out extremely extremely rare but here I am reviewing this movie and honestly I cannot wait to discuss this movie because this might be one of the best animated films I've seen this year I mean I'm, I'm not gonna lie when I say this when I say this you guys I mean compared to anything else that's probably coming out this was my most anticipated animated film of the year and the reason why was because well Laika that's one word I can describe it that sums it up perfectly Laika their films has never ceased to amaze me. While some films are, you know, while some of their films better than others, from the four films from the new era that they have made, Coraline, Paranorman, The Box Trolls, and now Kubo and The Two Strings, they have never ceased to amaze me in their animation and in their works. I mean, I mean, they, they take years upon years to make something that is totally original and has, and actually has weight to it, actually tries to approach it in the in a kids movie but also in a more adult theme in there and this one is absolutely no exception i i went into this movie like expecting expecting the very best out of it and what i got from it was was that in fact i got even more out of it than i expected so pretty much the plot of this movie because I don't have the Wikipedia. But let's just say that I'm going from the back of my, from the tip of my ha tip of my mind because honestly, this is going to be a very hard thing to describe because this is from a Japanese type um, folk tale story. Even though I don't really know if this is based on any type of folk tale, but I'm just gonna go from what the movie tells me. So pretty much, there is this boy named Kubo who develops something like magical powers from both his from both of his parents until sadly his mom dies pr trying to protect him from pretty uh, from pretty much what they consider the moon king and it's up to, it's up to him to pretty much figure out a destiny between a monkey and a man who was cursed into a body of a beetle now um judging by that um judging by that um description right here you might say that this is very you know this has to accommodate some type of um, mythology or some type of folktale and it does play so like that it's it's a story about going from one place to to another place defeating all these monsters while getting this while getting part of um, something that they need to defeat the villain at the end and while it's kind of a little bit video game essence kind of like mostly story based on that level it depends on the journey and not the actual um it, it depends on the journey and not how it ends and from what the journey has implied in this movie it is extremely fun to to watch let me just get this out of the way right now Laika is probably one of the most respected and I really mean this respect to animation company to, to me I mean they put out such amazing work I cannot believe it these people must be insane insane to do three seconds of footage in a week and it's it's just it's just amazing when you see like all of this work when they can create a whole body of ocean with paper when they can literally take clay and make it into expressions that you have to put every single face on just to make one single expression on each other's face and do it in the amount of time that it takes probably to make a very well edited video. And that to me is just amazing. It's just really amazing to me how much dedication and how much effort that they put into these movies and yet, for some reason, they still, like, they don't do, like, you know, terrible at the box office. They just do mildly okay because people want to go see films that are, like, you know, not really all that stop motion. People want to go see our 3D animated films. And it's fine for our 3D animated films, but when you come up with something that comes out at least two, like, three, three times, like, a year. Uh, like, we only get these films, Coraline... 2009, Paranorman, 2010, 
2012, The Box Trolls, 2014, and now this with 2016. They only come out with these films for, uh, for literally like a short amount of time. Or pretty much, you know, a span pretty much of every single movie. And what they exist to do with this style that's apparently dying out, Leica's the only one doing this, guys. Leica's the only one that's actually distributing, distributing these films worldwide and actually getting extremely critical praise for these for these movies. And I, I would not lie if, you know, if I completely agree with them. I mean, they, they earn my respect for... For, some, for an animation um, style that is currently at risk right now. But, I mean, I would admit right now that this was one of the few times I have cried in a movie, not from sadness, but from the absolute astonishment of the animation. I was tearing. I was tearing up because of how great this animation truly is. How stylized it is, how the characters' expressions are, that are how smooth that animation is because Laika is the master of their craft. Nobody else does stop motion like this. And they're clearly they they clearly got it down to a T because of how amazing the animation is. I mean, you go back and look at look at Coraline and see like how some of the animation is a little bit choppy, how some how some movements are slower than others. You can go back. It's still a really, you know, amazing film for the for its time, but you know, you can tell that, you know, some of the animation is a little bit slow. This one, no. They got it down. They, go, they have just improved, improved, improved on their animation ever since. And it's rare for something like to do that. I go see these 3D animated films and, you know, you can tell which one has a much more higher quality than others. But pretty much to me, they all look the same besides, anim besides pretty much, you know, how, how they pretty much draw their characters. I know something like Pixar is is different from Disney and I know extremely well that Disney is different from DreamWorks but in terms of you know the pretty much texture of it pretty and uh, not so much the style it feels kind of like the same to me a little bit but seeing this animation come come out every couple of years is just astonishing to me and it's something that I, I wish to treasure and I wish to praise and the the story and the characters all also seem to they just also seem to carry on this story really true and and just faithful honestly i if there was every single animated film out there that was like this i would not complain i would totally not complain because we get movies with pop songs in it we get movies with pop culture references in it we can't have like a pure decent animated film without having to throw something something pretty much aimed for adults on this screen or let's just say um let's just say a dirty a dirty joke something for the adults to appreciate something because every single animated film has to be a comedy nowadays this one is probably one of the most adult <laughs> Like, I know it's weird for me coming out of Sauce's party and saying, oh, a rated R film that relies on its, on its sort of um, ridiculous humor to get around this message about, about religion. But having seen, having seen this and having its story told through visually, but also to the fact of it not straying away from pretty much what the norm is now. I cannot lie, it's refreshing. It's honest to God refreshing. Why we don't get more of these movies? Well, we have just grown we have just grown too developed. We cannot get timeless films anymore. This is a timeless film. And whether or not it does well at the box office, we don't know. Because honestly these films have been just been doing okay. I mean Coraline was a hit. Paranormal was kind of a hit, and then Box Trolls kind of went a little bit downhill from there. I want Kubo to do extremely well. 
I want Kubo to exceed because of the great marketing that it's been getting and the amount of critical success. I mean, this thing has like 93 on Rotten Tomatoes, and you know what? I'm giving it a, a 93, maybe, maybe even more, or maybe I'm going a little bit too far. I have no idea. <laughs> but for me, the characters in it and how likable they are, how great and snappy the dialogue is, I mean, you'll miss it in a beat. And for something as calculated as stop motion animation to move every single little tiny frame in about three seconds a week of film, and to have it look this amazing for one of the few animation companies ever that exceeds in animation and not just sticks to every single formula, they have earned my pity. <laughs> they have earned my respect earned my trust. I absolutely believe that Laika can do nothing absolutely wrong unless they go bankrupt and we have no more of these movies. But I, I surprisingly think that they're not because not only do kids love these films, adults love these films because it's an art. It's something that they can appreciate. Something that actually treats them like adults. There, there, is, a, there is pretty much a scene in here where it goes against anything that I have seen in an anime in a <laughs> in an animated film whatsoever. Well, maybe I have seen in a few, but they don't commit to it. They don't commit it. This film commits to something that I haven't seen in any movies really. Period. And I I won't give it away. It's a spoiler, so I won't give it away. But let's just say that the main character of this of this film is a kid. And he has pretty much um, just one eye, pr pretty much because of some tragic event that happened in the past. And they commit to probably one of the most mature subjects I, I have seen for, for any kid to tackle. And that is, I don't know, I, I can't get away because it's a spoiler, but... Let's just say it's something that I rarely see, and it's 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 pulled off beautifully. It's pulled off very beautifully, and I can't think of another word to describe this movie, but absolutely astonishing. It was incredible from from beginning to it was incredible from beginning to end. I will not hesitate to go and watch this again. I mean, I would probably watch it several times. I mean, just to calculate on how the message is brought up of the message of spirituality and pretty much reincarnation and stuff like that. And they put these messages into these films and put it in a smart way. This is this is the animation gear of having putting smart real, smart messages into these animated films pretty much. I mean, you had Zootopia with the discrimination. You had pretty much Sausage Party taking on religious beliefs. And now you have this with spirituality and reincarnation and how that pretty much developed into this Japanese type of folktale. And it's, it's mature, it's great. I cannot think of any way to describe this but brilliant. And what I would rate it, well, it's probably gonna be up, probably gonna be up there with Zootopia. And in terms of Leica films, this is my second favorite best because honestly, Coraline is something very nostalgic to me. It scared me as a kid, and I I I just absolutely love Coraline, and I think it cap captured the the essence of a teenager very well. And to for Leica to go out and do this, if this is what the direction that they're headed with this side of fantasy type movie, then I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. It'll be fine to go back to horror once in a while, but I'm cool with them doing whatever they want because Leica does it, does it best. So I will give this movie about just um, pretty much, I don't know if I can go to a 9, but I'll give it really close and give it an 8.9 because it's one of the best it's one of the best looking anime films that I've ever seen and it's it stays true, it stays faithful, and we just need more of that. So thank you guys for listening to my review and as always JC Major Critic out. See you guys later. Take care.